your spirit and your energy and you're so above it all and you're so arrogant and I just love that. So arrogant. You're so totally <laughs> fucking arrogant. I love that. And just so I am not. <laughs> damn it. I have for you today I've got an import and I don't mean one of those cheap Chinese knockoffs I'm talking about the real deal she's beautiful charming intelligent and talented her name is Ella Cannon I think I'm in love <laughs> oh stop it oh my goodness <laughs> to your left to that's no, to your right to my left it's the great Mark Giordino writer producer director of behind the gate brand new film which I heard is gonna be at AFM you're in France right now you're moving and shaking buddy well I don't know if we're moving and shaking but we're trying put it to you this way I know 9,999 other filmmakers whose movies are going nowhere trust me you know where they're going they're going back into the kitchen right and they're using the DVD case to use as a plate because they spend all their money have nothing left for utensils that's a true story <laughs> oh I, why is there no wedding ring on your finger <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, I'm sure a couple of people try to put one there. You know what I would have done for her? Hey, by the way, I'm married and I'm still going to say it. You know what I've done for you? What? Everything. Oh. You wouldn't know how to feed yourself when I get done with you. Oh. You know what you'd look like? What? You'd look like a, one of those dolls they put in the glass cases. Oh, no. People say that all the time. And you'd stand there in this that. nice, pretty little dress. Like a China doll. No, no, no. Get rid of the Chinese. Okay. <laughs> More like an Australian doll. Okay. And there'd be two things I'd allow you to do for yourself. Mm -hmm. And one of them would be cry for help on Wednesdays. That's it. Other no. than that, I'm doing everything. Get me out of here. <laughs> I'm not. Help. You came from Australia to be with us today. I did. Just, just to be with you. No, you came to go to school at the Stella Adler well, Academy. Well, that too. That too. And to learn your craft. That's true. Talk to me about film in Australia. What goes on there? Oh. Not enough, unfortunately. Um, the Australian film industry is something is still kind of finding its way. Unfortunately, we don't kind of have enough support uh, financially from investors or the government, so we're quite limited to, you know... Our Are you sure there's not enough? Because I know that it's a boys' club. <sighs> and they've got a few girls in there. Mm. But it's not that there's not enough, because Australia is not a broke country. Uh, they can pretend all they want, but they've got enough resources for for people to invade yeah. you know, the Middle East. They've got enough mm -hmm. resources for their social programs. They've got enough money for these beautiful <laughs> social uh, 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 experiments like the giant Sydney Hall and all the other. They have money for that. They have the money, but, but it's where they choose to put it. I'm going to ask a question, and you're going to wait patiently, and you're going to answer me because everything you say matters to me now. Okay. There's, it's just funny. I was in Hollywood last night. I'm so sorry. And I said, I heard a girl say, I want one of those bacon wrapped hot dogs. And I looked around and it was you. And I said, oh my God. What? The little place next door to Stella, they sell a little bacon wrapped hot dogs. You were all over that thing. I didn't even eat red meat. Yes, you do. Lies. Yes, you do. <laughs> and then you burped. And when you burped, I was, already, I was already in Burbank and I heard you burp. I was on my way home. All right, fine. You burped me. so pretty. All right, all right. Find out how pretty this young woman burps when we come back. So I'm going to pat her on the back and give her a little warm milk. You'll hear it. <laughs> Stay tuned for more from Mark Giardino and me. Because your mama told you to. <laughs> Jason, this is stupid. No, Kelly, it's good for morale. Our member benefits are important. So, when we give members loyalty discounts on insurance, I do this. Five years with RACV, give me the high 5% discount. All right, 10 years for 10%, high 10. 25 years, 15% discount. All right, and put it all together. 5, 10, 15, 20. Bang, and that is how you say it. Yes, all day long, baby. <sighs> We're back on the show, and Miss Cannon crossed her arms and crossed her legs, effectively cutting me off from that beautiful energy of hers because I said something very, very horrible about making a lamp out of her skin. I don't remember what I said. But... Let me tell you something. That lamp would be beautiful. 
thank you. And it would light the whole world. Oh. It would light the whole world. Now, we were talking about Australia filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And you're saying there's not enough to go around. Why do you feel that way? Well, it's one of those things that it's very hard to get your foot in the door. Once you're there, they tend to recycle the same actors over and over again. People are afraid of investing in new talent. Why? Again, it's a financial thing. No. No, it is. We have enough no. money as a country, but we are not choosing to invest it Mark in the Mark has something to say, and I'm going to no, listen. Uh, I, I don't agree with that. It's not unsimilar to the U.S. People in positions that are on the other side uh, have to really like something to take a risk. Otherwise, they take the secure approach, which is hiring somebody that's already proven. This is this is true, but even even so, like for example, out in LA, you know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm auditioning, you know, a couple of times a day. It, mm -hmm. It's so consistent the amount of work out here. Whereas in Australia, we are so lucky to get an audition a month. But again, your point was that they're using the same old tired and proven talent. Definitely, over and over but again. equity standards so, mean they have to audition everyone anyway. So these are just the amount of. But roles they're wasting out. your time. Well, because they know they're not going to hire you. Yes. When you when you think about the craft, <laughs> you have such great range. Oh, thanks. Oh my God, your range is amazing. <laughs> Talk to me about why you want to be an actor. What what is so attractive about the possibilities of that profession? Um, I think it's the fact that. And I want to apologize to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm a man. Oh man, every inch of me is a man. Mm. And when a woman is beautiful, I and I know women don't want to be judged by beauty. I understand that. They want to be judged by their talent or by what they can do or getting there. I get all that. But let me express something to you, okay. okay? There is nothing like beauty. I agree. When God made man and woman, he made them beautiful. He didn't make two screwy-looking monkeys. He made perfection. Mm. And I have a feeling he had something to do with you. Oh. A little something. <laughs> Okay, Thank go you, ahead, darling. please. Uh, I had, and so, don't be angry because you're pretty. I'm not angry. I'm There's not a lot angry, of ugly yeah, fat girls fat. who wish they looked like you. Oh. It ain't always about the base, baby. It ain't always about the base, <laughs> if you know good what point, I'm saying. Good point. I, okay. I know what you're saying. I hear you. Um, why I wanted to be an actor, I think it's, it basically stems from a want to do everything um, and an inability to choose something. And acting allows me to live in a, a, a multitude of universes. And I, I've always been a someone that has been so excited at the concept of making people feel, mm -hmm. kind of holding a mirror up to society. That's always been my kind of mission, you mm -hmm. know, to get inside people. Right. I see so many people that are just so shut off and never look at the world how it really is and never even look within themselves. And that's, that's, that's kind of something that really excites me is opening right. that portal for people. So that's my kind of drive. And mm -hmm. it excites me living in someone else. The idea of, of, of making a character and... and it, experiencing jobs or, or fears or desires that I would otherwise never experience. Do you find it frightening so, to, be on, to be on stage or To be on stage, yes, in front of the camera, no. Why? I'm not sure why that is. I think I, I enjoy the fear I get from stage. It's more of an adrenaline thing and it's that, that you have to get it right, you know. There's no second take on the stage. So there, there's higher stakes in some ways. You, you feel the same way, Mark? Mark was an actor yeah. for many, many years. Uh, well, it's, 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 more, it's more immediate on stage. Mm. You get a sense of how you're doing instantly. Uh, and, and there's a continuity, unlike film that shot, you might shoot the last scene the second day and vice versa, so it's a different kind of pacing. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's an immediacy uh, with theater and live performances that mm -hmm. sometimes is a little bit more frightening because if it doesn't feel like it's being received right or it's not going well, you can't take a break to refresh yourself. You've got to keep going, so you've got to turn it. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that really uh, happens a lot to comedians. Uh, well, young yeah, comedians yeah. at first start. When we used to work at the improv, uh, and if we started and it wasn't going well, even though we thought the material was real good because we did improv, it was the groundlings, and you somehow got to turn it around and you've got to do it while you continue on the mission you already started. And it's, it's tough though when you're going down. It's tough to pull that sink, that, sink that ship back up once it's But it's most it. rewarding when you do. Yeah. I've very know. rarely seen it come back. I've seen them take that nosedive, man. It's oh yeah, sometimes you can't, and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you just have the 
an audience that the material doesn't work on. When we come back, I'm, 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 st I'm stuck on this concept of beauty in the industry. And not just because I'm, I'm, I'm idealistic about it, but there is something you just did a moment ago where you locked in with your eyes and you're doing it now. And a lot of people will never develop that skill to be able to focus on another person so they mm -hmm. feel their most important thing in the room. And you're doing it now, and I believe you. And I think that's a trait and a tool that a lot of people don't understand. I want to talk about that when we come back. During the last break, Ella said, you're bald, your beard is gray, you've got a bit of a punch, but you're my personal John Eric Hexum. Now get a gun and shoot yourself. <laughs> we'll be right back. What happened? Where are your keys? Um, I left them at work. That's not like you. I know. Are you sick? I like low blood sugar. The concept of beauty um, in this industry is one that I don't think can be ignored. And I know you don't want to be identified just by that trait because there's talent beneath that surface, but ain't that that cocoa brown, smooth texture. There's something under there. And forgive me for what I just did. I, that's a I horrible you. thing men that's do okay. when they check women out. I know. But I find myself powerless against you. You're my kryptonite. Oh. Thank you. Kryptonite, kryptonite is very strong. It is very strong. Very strong kryptonite. Careful with that stuff. You gotta be real. <laughs> what do you want to be known for? Of all the things that you've accomplished so far, just by getting here, what do you want to be known for in your career? <sighs> because you're That's, at the beginning. and I mean, this is yeah. a very beautiful place. Because I see people at the beginning, the middle, and towards the end. And I can always pick out and go, ooh, I know where they went wrong, mm. right? What do you want to be known for at this occasion in your life? What are you going to say, you know, this is what I did? I have a real um, kind of passion for the darker stuff. And I don't ever want to be known as the pretty actress. I love getting ugly. I, there's something I really love doing in my art. And I want to be known as a storyteller. I want to tell stories. I want to look back on everything that I did and feel like I moved people. You know, I gave that to people. I, I gave hope to some people that are going through a dark time. I, I, you know. Tell me a role you think you would have loved to have played. Oh, I mean, okay, there's two answers to this question because I've always three. wanted to be a pirate. And I'll tell you I've something. always wanted to be a pirate. Pirate. Something pirate. I really want to do. Did you audition for that? I did. How'd it go? Oh, it went really well, but they, they passed on me. No. Which sucks, but I'm happy to have had the opportunity, okay? I got to be a pirate in an audition. I'm just going to take that as a win, okay? Next time. Next time. I'm going to keep working on it. Um, yeah, God, pirate. I'd love to do a villain. I love the crazy stuff, you know? I love going a bit mental. It's just this thing I have. Um, Filipino guy walks into a bar with a parrot on his shoulder. Uh -uh. Bartender says, where'd you get that? Parrot says, Manila, there's millions of them. <laughs> that was random. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Writes goodness. his own material. Uh -huh. yes, I can tell, indeed. I can tell. <laughs> now let me ask you a question. Wait, wait, she was gonna finish, okay. you had two, you had pirate, then what else? Um, pirate, and then, Oh, see, Do you I like have, black sails? Yeah, well, I auditioned for that when it first came out. Didn't get that either, unfortunately. Who would you audition for? Uh, I auditioned for Eleanor. You know, Guy Norris sat in that very chair, the second unit director. Really? And his partner, Alan Conley, was here from Australia. They're very nice. They're coming. In fact, Alan's coming out next week. You huh. should meet him. Yeah, next time they're here, let's yeah, tie so them he's up doing and put them in a with, No, it's not until that, they but give me a role. I'm telling you, it's connections. <laughs> Everything is connected. I don't. It's. I. I truly and firmly believe. Talent will only take you so far. Absolutely. And then it's a matter of connections, mm -hmm. how much people like you, yeah. and how agreeable you are to being a part of the system. Mark, you had a question for this, mm. this young, lovely yeah, what, uh, Turkish delight. What made you decide, and how, how, how difficult a decision was it for you to come over and try over here? What, what said, I want to go to the United States now? I didn't actually think it was the right time for me, to be honest. I came over for a little bit because the, the study institutions over here are just so brilliant compared to what mm -hmm. we have at, back home. Yeah. 
um, and Stella have looked after me so beautifully. So I came over here for a short stint actually, but I got signed with a new management team and things just kind of started happening. I started auditioning all the time and getting callbacks and consistently good feedback. So it was mm -hmm. kind of like if I was to leave now, that would just why? be idiotic. Yeah, why? So I'm here. And what that's... would you do if you were back in Australia? What would you be doing now? What would I be doing? Yeah. I'd be working a crappy job on the side. I'd yeah. be trying to book that one audition I get a month and hoping yeah. something comes from it. When we come back, we're going to talk about your heart. Oh. Uh-oh. And if, in fact, you do have one. Not sure. Oh, we'll be right there. There may even be a <laughs> transplant in the works. It might even be made out of gold. Mm. Your mama's not here, so now you got to make your own decision to watch or not. Be a man, for goodness sakes. We're back, and we're going to talk about love. How do you maintain relationships in this type of business? Oh, God, what a difficult question. I know. I don't I know, know yet. I'm still working that out. I think it's one of those things you have to approach it with the attitude that if someone can fit into what I'm doing, exactly. brilliant, but you can't bend to fit anybody. Never. You just can't. It's such a selfish business. It is so selfish. Because you, I noticed that early on, that mm. it's part and parcel of what these people have to go. You're up, you're down, you're rejected, you're accepted, you're loved, you're hated. Oh, my God. I remember Bill Bixby's wife, when they killed herself. This woman has some soap opera gigs. I forget, um, I'll tell you her name in a second. It was... Uh, Beautiful woman. I mean, just... And Bill Bixby, you maybe not know him, but back in the 60s, he had a show... Eddie's called, Father. Courtship of Eddie's Father. And he also played the Hulk in the old CBS television series. He played Bruce Banner. But this guy just had that look, and he had a great fit. And you thought on the outside he had this great life, but mm -hmm. his wife was this miserable, ill individual. He finally took her own life. Yeah. And you hear so many stories. And he I died prematurely. Uh, cancer, yeah. Yeah. prostate cancer. Yeah. Um, the problem is that it's such a selfish business. How do you maintain relationships? Yeah, it's so difficult. And it's one of those things, too, that it's such a difficult <laughs> art to understand for people that aren't in it or aren't connected to it, mm -hmm. to, to understand that if you have an audition coming up for a very dark character, you know, you might be reserved for a few days mm -hmm. and they can't work out why. And mm -hmm. why do you have to kiss another boy? And all those things that come into play. Can two actors make it work in your mind? Oh, I don't know. That's, that's why I hear these too. marriages, man. I go, mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's, I, I think, well, I've married an actress, so uh, I think it's more difficult than someone who's not in the business in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the percentage of relationships that don't work long term of actors and actresses, I think it's much higher than the normal. Oh, it's got to be. I think it's more. exhausting. It's like mm -hmm. it's big egos, and, and when one's working and the other's not, that puts a lot of pressure on the situation. Right. I think it's best to find someone completely unrelated who's just really chilled out. Well, that's. You know? I think that's really the key, but I think it's also the key is to find someone that, like, I met this woman once, and she was in her 70s when I met her. And she said, no, really, this is fine. She goes, you know, I used to be an entertainer, and I said, you used to be an entertainer. And she goes, yeah. Now, the woman's husband lived for her. I mean, this guy mm -hmm. lived for I, I, I When I met her, I go, this dried up hag, you know, she's mean, she's nasty, she's rude. I mean, I, all the horrible things. Mm. And she went, went out into the back and came back with a little book. And the book, you know, was like pictures of her when she was an entertainer back in the, in the 40s. Yeah. And I look at some of these pictures and I go, oh my God, I can see why he did what he did. Aww. He... He was completely absorbed by her and her talent and her beauty. And he could not see her in any other way than he'd seen her when she was 22 when he met her. Hmm. And he it never deviated up until the point where he died. And I knew him when he died. Oh, my God. You have to have someone that absolutely adores yeah. and loves you and needs you to succeed. Yeah, that's it. And I read a quote from Daniel Craig and, and Rachel Weiss where he said, I don't allow electronics in the bedroom. And I said, well, what if she wants some electronics in the bedroom? Who are you to tell her? See, I, like that, a radio or something? No radios, no <laughs> nothing, no iPads, no phones. They don't have allowed. And I, and I just thought to myself, that's what he liked. But what if she wants? You know what I mean? Because they're both success. Excuse me, they're both successful. Yeah. Anyone can leave at any time. No one's tied to each other financially. You know, oof. That's See, tough. Yeah. But I, I think the ability to make a relationship just depends on the two people and not 
what they're involved in. Yeah. You know, it's like... Uh, you know what? I'm going to disagree with you so hard that my spine hurts. Well... Because you can't have two people vying for the spotlight in one room. Why do you have to vie for a spotlight? Because, you know, if you look at Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, for instance, or Tom Cruise and, and, and Katie Holmes, right? Her career has taken such a nosedive that you got to go underwater to see one of her movies, okay? While his career continues to soar with these silly sci-fi movies. Maybe it depends movies. on what kind of actors they are and what, what their career pursuits are. No, because... They might have had the same problem if they weren't actors. I disagree. Totally. Yeah. And you could be right in those particular cases, but I, I really think that regardless of what your occupation is, you've, you've got to be involved in the other person and take every, it's, at my marriage, for example, I, I, I always said I was going to take it one day at a time. That if today was good, I wasn't going to expect tomorrow to be good. And if today was bad, I wasn't going to expect tomorrow to be bad. I started every day and always have fresh. And many times I've had to where I would have had a problem. Yeah. You know, I, I think that that's what makes, uh, but I can I also understand the clashing that happens with egos. And egos have a propensity to be higher in the entertainment business fields. Are girls jealous of you? Well, I... Just answer the question. Don't start that part I think saying, people are jealous of people. I that's don't... my girl. Yeah. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. When we come back, Ella's going to tell me something that I haven't heard in months. And I believe it's get off my foot. Let's find out what he says when he comes back. Ella said, if we were dating, you wouldn't need cable. I said, if we were dating, I wouldn't need anything. Now throw these survival packs away. Where do you want to live? Where do I want to live? Yeah, where do you want to live? Anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world. Um, somewhere warm, tropical like the Caribbean or, I mean, Hawaii is so beautiful. Right. I mean, I love Australia, it's home. I wanna live everywhere. Australia's too dangerous. No, it's not. It's got no, all no, the no. deadly animals and beasts and know, bees and stings and snakes and, you know. They teach you in school how to take care of all that. And didgeridoos. They're not dangerous. They are if you, if you don't fit in it. But they've got koala bears. Well, koala bears are vicious. Not a bear. I, it's a marsupial, mm -hmm. I know and they make good eating. If you take the head off of a koala and take a spoon and dig straight down, it's like ice cream, especially if you keep it in a cold place for a couple of days first. That's a true story. So Very sorry. true. So yeah. sorry, Australia. I was thinking about doing a franchise, but you know why you know, they sleep so much? Because their heads They're are high. Off. They're high. High, yeah. yeah. Eucalyptus leaves, they get yeah. stoned on them. sleep yeah. and get high so and whoever have knew sex that, and go to sleep that again. koala bears were Jamaican? There's no way to know. Mm. What is, is life like for you at this age, in this world? What's it like for you? Are you hopeful? Are you, are you frightened? The, the world is a, is a tumultuous place. Mm. We've got war on, I think it's four continents right now, and in, in 30 countries. We have um, economic issues that are overwhelming with the World Bank going nuts and currency changing hands at the rate that's never changed before, mm. gold's up and down. A lot of people are out of work. What's, for a person your age, what's the world like? What do you, how do you see the world? It feels very uncertain, and I feel like that's a lot of people, um, a, a lot of my peers would agree with that, that uh, especially in our age at the moment, in our personal lives and in the world in general, there's, there's still so much to understand and work out. And at this age, we're kind of working out where our place is going to be in society and what we're going to offer. And with everything around us, like how we're going to survive in amongst, whether it's global warming, whether it's, you know, um, the problem with food, whether it's war, wh whatever it happens to be, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to live through that and how we're going to deal with that. Um, personally, same thing. I'm figuring out where my foothold is in this career and I'm at a very pivotal moment with that at the moment, seeing what road is I'm going to be going down. And, you know, to be pursuing something like acting when I could be in a stable job providing mm -hmm. for my family and, right. you know, we haven't had the easiest, you know, life or mm -hmm. we've had a lot of bad things happen to us. So I could be taking the selfless route and doing that, but instead mm -hmm. I've had to, to deal with the conflict within myself of pursuing what I want 
and hope that by doing that, I'm going to be able to give more back later. Yeah. You know, oh, there's so much, so much. Well, I'll tell you right now, I could make all those bad things go away. Oh, you. could you? I could in moments, in just moments, in he just could. moments, huh? Snap that finger. Snap of mm. the finger. Look at that camera and tell the world who you are and what you do. I am Ella Cannon and I am an actress. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> But I couldn't have said it at all because I'm not Ella Cannon, and I'm not elegant, and I'm not beautiful, and I'm not sweet, and I'm not young, looking at the world through these glasses that show her everything that she needs to do to be who she wants to be. I'm just me. And I'm joined by Mark Giardino. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, For yes. more information on Del Weston, go to DelWestonOnFilm.com. That's DelWestonOnFilm.com. For Mark Giardino, it's BehindTheGateMovie.com. BehindTheGateMovie.com. And we can find more about Ella Cannon where? Oh, God, anywhere. IMDb. <laughs> IMDb. <laughs> Google me. Google me, baby. Google me. <laughs> Google what me. people say these days, isn't it? You know, I had a girl say it to me one time, and so I finished her drink and walked away. I said, hmm. can I buy you a drink? She said, yes. I said, I'm Dell. She said, my name is Karen. I said, great. So she, I ordered her a drink. She sat down and said, so where can I find out more about you? She says, Google me. Aww. And I took her drink she and drank it. Like a I took her drink and I drank it. I said, Google yourself. And I walked away. <laughs> this is like I got a drinking problem. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> and that's how we roll.